Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be looking at some really budget motors I bought off eBay to see how they perform. I've been uh, looking for some really cheap motors off eBay for uh, quite a while now, and uh, I decided on these ones simply because almost all of the reviewers uh, said that they were using them for uh, various model train projects. Uh, some people are even mentioning putting them in Cato engines. Um, and these cost like four Canadian dollars each, so really not too much of an investment. So I went ahead and ordered uh, seven of them there. And uh, yeah, I'm really curious to see how these perform. I was uh, quite impressed with the specs for four Canadian dollars. They're skew wound five pole motors rated at about 12 volts. So uh, pretty optimal for uh, model trains really. And uh, I have that old uh, CN engine, which uh, some of you probably remember what happened with. Uh, basically the previous motor on this was arcing and causing problems. So I tried to put uh, a different motor in it, which was a five pole. And that, uh, as you know, ended up burning up. So I'm hoping we can install one of these and uh, see exactly how they perform. The uh, shipping was a little bit odd. I got the deluxe shipping, which was uh, $4, which meant they were supposed to arrive in August. And then it said they were delayed and they were going to arrive in uh, September. Um, and then I got a new tracking confirmation and it said that they arrived. So I went down to my uh, mailbox and sure enough, look what's there. So here they all are. I ordered seven of them, so there the little doubles are. They had really good reviews, so that's uh, why I was pretty confident ordering a few of them. Yeah, so look at them all. Not bad. Spins just fine there. Got some uh, contacts. Of course, you can solder to these, which is good because you don't want to solder directly on there. It could melt the plastic. Um, but yeah, it's also got a dual uh, shaft, which is great because, of course, in a uh, an old RSO like uh, this one right here, uh, you, the motor you know kind of goes in there like so. I might need to trim this down a little bit for it to fit properly, but uh, yeah, I'm really curious to see uh, how this performs. So uh, yeah, anyway, uh, without further ado, let's uh, I guess. Uh, test this thing and install it in a uh, locomotive and see what it's like. All right, so I got some leads from a 16-volt uh, Tyco controller. I've got it at about 30% power, and uh, you can see that thing's doing just a fine uh, RPM. It's not bad torque-wise either. Let's see if I can get it down to a little bit of a lower speed. It really doesn't take much power, I have to say. So that's, uh, that's about the kick out point. Unfortunately, this uh, Tyco controller can't actually do a low enough speed, but uh, overall it seems to be a fine runner. All right, so I've gone ahead and installed the motor in this uh, CNAHM locomotive, and uh, it seems to uh, fit surprisingly well. You can uh, see what I did here. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, this is a super shady job. I had to uh, do a lot of modifications to get this all uh, working there because uh, I had already cut out part of the bottom. So uh, you can see the motor's not seated perfectly evenly, but that's not much of a problem. I got it secured with some foam and some hot glue. Um, I mean, this is really just for experimental purposes. So uh, obviously if you were you know, gonna install this, you'd do a more professional job, but uh, just uh, to t test this whole thing out, uh, this is how I uh, ended up doing it there. Anyway, um, one thing that I was really impressed by is uh, these two things which link the motor shaft to the rest of the drive system. Uh, the two plastic parts fit on the drive shaft perfectly. I was so surprised. I really didn't uh, think that they would. Um, they're actually tight enough that they can hold themselves on. I did add a little bit of glue to this one just to uh, make sure it, it doesn't uh, slide or anything like that. But uh, yeah, I'm really impressed. That's just dumb luck right there that uh, apparently uh, the uh, drive shafts on these uh, you know cheap motors here are uh, very similar to the ones on the AHM motors. So uh, yeah, that's just something I thought that was sort of cool. Uh, anyway, uh, why don't we put the shell back on here and uh, we'll take this thing over to the track and uh, see exactly how it runs. Cause I'm uh, honestly really curious to see how, uh, how this locomotive is going to uh, perform with a uh, five pole motor instead of, instead of one of those old uh, uh, AHM three poles. All right, so let's get this thing all set up on the track here. One thing that I should uh, probably note is that this locomotive essentially only has four wheel pickup, as in uh, there are two wheels on one side and two wheels on the other that pick up power. So uh, it's not gonna be great from a uh, contact area perspective, but uh, it should run okay, hopefully. Anyway, without further ado, let's give this thing some power and see how it goes there. 
All right, look at that. Well, it's running. I uh, definitely call that a success. It's fairly uh, quiet, as you can see. It's not too bad. I don't know how many volts I set it to there. It's running at about eight, eight or nine volts. Turned it up a little bit. So uh, yeah, that doesn't seem too bad. Current draw doesn't uh, appear to be too high. Uh, one thing I should note too is it's got a really old incandescent bulb on it, so that's probably part of it. But uh, for an engine of its kind, that's actually pretty efficient. That's about half of what an Atherin Blue Box locomotive would draw, so it's not bad. Even if we bring the power up, it doesn't really climb too much. Well, it's plenty fast too, so that's good to see. And uh, one thing I am kind of curious about is what kind of uh, low speed capabilities this thing has got. Now, it does have the four wheel uh, contact, so I'm not sure if it's just going to cut out just because of that, but uh, if we try to bring it down. Uh, that's not bad right there. Not bad. I think it's probably going to kick out any second now. Yeah, so that's about the lowest speed. It is, I guess, technically moving, although it's, yeah, I don't know, not really going all that fast. But uh, fair enough, it definitely really improved this uh, old uh, AHM quite a bit. So, uh, yeah, that's one thing uh, that uh, i got to say I'm uh, pretty impressed by. So, uh, yeah, overall, uh, I think that was uh, $4 well spent. This could certainly fix up uh, a lot of my other uh, old RSOs that don't run so great. And uh, yeah, it essentially turns these really kind of cheap engines uh, with really cheap motors now uh, into uh, decent runners. So I guess that's uh, something you could say. So uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Well, folks, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I've got to say, I'm pretty impressed with these uh, cheap little motors here. I thought it was a very good value for your money kind of thing. You know, only four Canadian dollars. And uh, it really improved this old uh, AHM locomotive, which is uh, something I was very pleased to see. So uh, yeah, for the price, uh, it's really not bad. I don't know uh, how long these things are going to last, what kind of brushes they have and whatnot, but uh, the construction actually doesn't seem all that bad. You know, it's got metal bearings and, uh, you know, like anything, if you maintain these things, they can last an awful long time. So uh, yeah, I'm hopeful that uh, they're going to be a good uh, long-term solution for uh, older locomotives there. And uh, yeah, overall, it's really just not a big investment for them. So uh, yeah, really good uh, little solution there. Anyway, I want to thank you all so much for watching.